engineering and maths. Four intertwined subjects, weaving in and out of each other in attempts to improve the future for us all. And there are some clear opportunities, of course, to link the classroom work you're already doing in the other three to engineering. Units of measurement, litres, metres and kilos. Euros and cents even if it comes to cost analysis. Experimenting with wooden or plastic building blocks. Exploring forces. But that's sometimes easier said than done if you don't happen to be a specialist in science, technology, engineering or maths. So let's take a look at a few other potential starting points. Planet Earth, home to the only life form we know to have on a massive scale engineered the environment to suit its own needs and aspirations. Us, humans. It's big, isn't it? Actually, to a little person, it's absolutely huge. Too big to comprehend, really. Let's try something on a slightly smaller scale. The island of Ireland. Although, to be honest, that's still pretty sizable to a small person, full of unknown and unknowable places. How about the street your school is on? Now that's better. Every paving stone, every lamppost is known. Objects we pass every school day. Objects that, if we're going to be truthful, we often pass by without a second thought. Which is why the street your school is on makes such a great starting point to look at engineering. The kind of engineering that's almost invisible because it's ubiquitous. The kind of engineering that affects us all, though we rarely stop to think about it. How many different types of engineering can you see represented in this scene? How many do you think your pupils would spot? Probably more than you'd guess. Let's zoom in a bit. Look at the houses, flats and office blocks. Who built them? Come to that, who built the bricks that built them? Who designed and engineered the streetlights? How does the electricity supply get to them? And who made sure that it does? What about those emergency vehicles? What is it that they can do that other vehicles can't? It'll be quite a long list, you can be sure of that. And the opportunities for questions and answers, for learning and discoveries go on. Let's take a look at the science and engineering of materials. Look at what these people are wearing. What conditions and working practices have they been developed for? What specialist equipment will each of those people use? Somewhere, sometime, somehow, engineers will have been involved. You can link engineers and engineering to any job, of course, which is a great way of supporting children in understanding that engineering is so much more than bridges, tunnels and roads. Who was responsible for designing the shell of the aeroplane? What about its flight systems and navigational controls? Or the little trays your meals come in? Then there's the control tower, the runway, the airport concourse itself. Who is responsible for the tractors, the harvesters, the ploughs, the milking machines and muck spreaders? The systems that allow seeds to be harvested, stored and sown. The plants where our soaps, shampoos and toothpaste are made all rely on chemical engineers, skilled professionals who create streamlined processes allowing raw materials to be turned into useful products. Aeronautical engineers, agricultural engineers, chemical engineers, biomedical, civil and mechanical engineers. What connects them is that they're all people. People working hard to make better lives for other people. Now, that is something that children can understand. And by looking at the parts those people have played in the ways this street has changed over the years, you'll enhance your pupils' understanding of what engineering is and who engineers are. At the same time as bringing to life key aspects of the curriculum in both history and geography. And you can adopt this approach too, of course, with many other areas of the curriculum. To take just one example, using a story or a text 
to support the acquisition of skills in both oral language and reading can sit perfectly happily alongside spotting the engineers and engineering hiding in plain sight within that story. After all, what does Shoemaker, if not an engineer? So, could your children think of all the processes that might be involved in engineering a pair of shoes? They could create a flowchart to show this, and then even go on to explore who would engineer all the materials the shoemaker would need. Once we as adults start taking a little bit more notice of the world around us, we begin to see just how much engineering and engineers affect pretty much every area of our lives. And from that springboard, it's easy to tie engineers and engineering into pretty much any teaching area. To remind our children just how important engineering is, and to remind them that some of them will grow up to become the engineers of the future.